Okay, let's keep going. Last time we talked about the lung compliance, either the low compliance, high compliance, they are both bad. Like low compliance, fibriotic lung disease, it's very difficult to expand the lung. And high compliance, like emphysema, usually due to smoking, it makes the lung very easy to expand but difficult to recoil. Now let's look at the pressure change in the lung when you breathe. So we're going to talk about the pressure in the lung, we call it an intraalveolar pressure. And we're going to talk about the pressure in the pleural cavity, the, the close, completely closed chamber outside the lung, and the pressure called intrapleural pressure. Okay, we're going to draw this. So we start from the uh, intrapleural pressure. The intrapleural, intrapleural, the pleural cavity, the pressure there is negative. So start from minus three. And when you inhale, when you inhale, so you make the volume increase. And when the volume increase, the pressure decrease. So the pressure drop from minus three to minus six. And when you exhale, the volume decrease. When the volume decrease, the pressure increase. So it go back to minus three. So intrapleural pressure, it goes down in inspiration, goes up in expiration. So it looks like this. Now let's look at the intraavioli. Intraavioli, in the avioli, is not completely closed. It connects to the outside through your airway. So the starting pressure is zero, equal to outside. When you inhale, the volume increase. When the volume increase, the pressure decrease, so it goes down. But it connects to the outside, so every time you start to have a pressure gradient, the air flow. The air will flow in to decrease the pressure gradient. So when the air flow in, the pressure increase. So in the end of inspiration, there's a difference. This is completely closed chamber. This is not. So the vo the pressure decrease, then it go back to normal. So you, you inhale, the air flow in, and eventually the air stop because there's no pressure gradient. So no pressure gradient, no flow. So the pressure gonna go down, go up. When you exhale, when you exhale, the volume decrease the pressure increase, and the pressure increase will go up. But every time you have a pressure gradient, the air start to flow. So this increase will push the air out, and the air flow out, the pressure go back to zero. So intro every all that pressure, it look like this. In the end of inspiration, in the end of expiration, both of them, they are zero. So that's this. Intro alveoli pressure, intro pleural pressure. And this indicates the volume change, air flow in, air flow out, in the inspiration, in the expiration. And let's talk about one more term. So the intro alveoli pressure stay between minus one to plus one. Intrapleural pressure in a normal situation always negative from minus three to minus six to minus three. And when you take the intraavioli pressure, substrate out intrapleural pressure, that's this number. We call it TPP, transpulmonary pressure. And you found in normal case, this pressure will always be positive. Will always be positive. So TPP, why is important in physiology? Because there's the pressure to keep the lung extended. And when you find this patient's transpulmonary pressure is zero or even negative, that means the lung collapse, means this line start to go up. And that's when the TPP decrease, or even worse, the TPP become negative. And that happens when pneumothorax happen. Pneumothorax is the disease. It's due to can be can happen chemically, uh, damage the lung, or more frequently happens uh, physically. You accidentally puncture the thoracic cage. When you puncture the thoracic cage, 
every time you breathe, the air won't flow in through your airway because this is high resistance. Air always find the easiest way, which has the lowest resistance to go. So when you puncture the thoracic cage, every time you breathe, the air won't flow in through the airway. The air will go in through the, the, the hole you punctured. And when the air flow in, it creates a bigger pleural pressure intrapleural pressure and this pressure will push the lung and now you're freaking out because you don't get the oxygen go to your lung and you breathe more when you breathe more more air flow in and your lung shrink more because tbp now it become negative and you can fix it so first you have two lungs so you have two separated uh, pleural cavity so you still have the other lung can function but you need to go to the hospital and get get the, the leakage fixed and rebuild the negative pressure in the pleural cavity. Okay, and this is just uh, FYI. It show you the lung has more than have more function than we thought, and this says well the lung is a place for the uh, new blood blood cells, especially red blood cells and platelet to produce. They produce blood. Now let's look at spirometry. Spirometry is a way to measure your lung function, very similar to uh, the EKG. We use EKG to measure the heart function. And that's the old spirometry. Now everything is digital, very small. But we used to have this kind of machine. We connect your mouse to this tube. So now your respiratory system and this machine connected together. And this bell suspended above water, on the water. So every time you breathe, your air flow in, flow out, and the bell move. And apparently there's a pen here. So every time you breathe, the pen move, and it can draw the line. And we can ask the patient, okay, breathe, try to suck as much, as much air in as possible and squeeze all the air out. And you're going to have the big wave, small wave. And when you have enough patient's spirometry, like you have a thousand patient's data, you look at this, it's very easy to tell, okay, this is normal, this is abnormal case, very similar to EKG. And the test is very quick. So this is the very uh, standardized spirometry picture. So first you ask the patient to breathe, normally breathe, inhale, exhale. And then we ask the patient, try to squeeze as much air out as possible. So this is the moving the air out. And normally inhale, exhale, inhale, then suck as much air in as possible. And squeeze all the air out and go back to normal breathing. And that's it. So the whole test takes about one minute. And you have enough data. When you look at this, we have four volumes and four capacity. You need to know this volume and this capacity. So this one is called the tidal volume. Tidal volume is you ask the patient normally breathe, inhale, exhale. It's like the tide move up and down. We call this tidal volume. And in the physiology man, uh, average persons. The tidal volume is about 500 mil. So in a normal case, you it's a quiet breathing. You just move, move about 500 mils of air in and out of your system. But in the emergency situation, you can squeeze out, you can push m twice more air out. We call it expiratory reserve volume. It's about 1100 mil. You can, you can squeeze twice more air out. And now let's look at this. Inspiratory reserve volume is about 3,000 mil. And that's in the emergency situation when you are fighting the bear. Your respiratory system can, can suck in six times more air than the tidal volume. So you can have a lot of oxygen, six times more fresh air go into your lung and those oxygen will go into your tissue and you are able to use those oxygen produce ATP. And the last volume is called the residual volume. So you found no matter how hard you try, 
your lung have about 1200 mil we call them residual volume so apparently in the pneumothorax if this person's lung shrink and the residual volume significantly de decrease and we have four volumes we have four capacity capacity is more than one volume add together like you add all of them together we call the total lung capacity and if we add the inspiratory reserve volume and tidal volume together we call the inspiratory capacity and we also have the vital capacity like these three together that's the air you can free move in move out of your system we call the vital capacity and function functional residual capacity that's when you are doing the quiet breathing your lungs should maintain about this volume and apparently when we compare a healthy person with a person with lung disease and they will find all well, this volume change like pneumothorax you you can expect the lung volume decrease and this person if they have emphysema emphysema is difficult to breathe the air out you can have, you're gonna find the expiratory reserve part the wave gonna it won't be this much you will have less air to squeeze out because the lung is like a, a plastic bag and difficult to recoil to expand to to squeeze the air out so it's very useful to us uh, to look at the spirometry and know the lungs function okay let's take a break